Hi, I'm Carrie Murphy and welcome back to Inspired Living TV. It's so easy to look at a successful woman and say that luck was on her side, or maybe she was born that way. And although my next guest was certainly born with an unshakable spirit and drive, her success has come from hard work and her life's mission to inspire women across the globe. I am so excited to sit down and share with you my friend, founder, and global CEO of Business Chicks, the unstoppable rock star, Miss Emma Isaacs. Hello, beautiful. Hi, gorgeous. I'm so glad we actually have time. <laughs> We're both in the same place at the same time. It takes a video to get us together. <laughs> it does, it does. Um, but first, I just want to say I love you, and I love what you have created with Business Chicks. Um, you actually bought Business Chicks over a decade ago. Yeah, around 11 years now. And it was just 250 people, right. members at the time. Right. Oh my gosh. And now it's Australia's largest networking right. organization with over 40,000. Uh -huh. That's incredible. Yeah, it's good. I mean, when you put it like that, <laughs> yeah, it seems... Yeah, it's good. You know? <laughs> no, I mean, it, I, I can sense the enormity when you put it like that. But for me, it's been 11 years of hard work and blood, sweat and tears. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I feel like I'm just starting. It's been a tremendous ride, but I feel like we've got so far to go still. And, you know, in a lot of ways, I just feel like we're, we're, we're still at the beginning. Isn't that so funny though that that it's someone from the outside can look in and say, oh my gosh, what enormous success. She must have it all together. Life must be so easy. <laughs> and, and you're here going, I feel like I'm just starting. I mean, really, I think for a lot of successful women with other women looking in, it's easy to feel that way. Do you see that? Right. No, I see that all the time. And I... You know, I think one thing that we do as entrepreneurs is we don't celebrate the little wins. You know, we're just mm -hmm. so head down and focused on what we're doing that we don't kind of stop and go, wow, we've reached this milestone. Wow, we just accomplished this. You know, for me, it's just been this continuous journey of putting one foot in front of the other. And, you know, maybe I do need to take stock every now and then and really step back and just say, hey, we've done pretty well. So what made you take over Business Chicks when you did? So I, uh, I've, I've really never worked for anyone else before in my life. I had my first company when I was 18 years old and it was a, a recruitment company. So, uh, you know, that was a tremendous journey in itself. I had that business for seven years and I built it into a really, really nice little business. We had about 40 staff and a really great wow. little culture. And, yeah. you know, for me, the common denominator with both my businesses has been people, you know, how you treat people, the relationships you enjoy, how you get the best from people. And I went along to this Business Chicks event and I just fell head over heels in love with the, the whole vibe, the spirit, the energy, mm -hmm. the people that I met there. And I was just really drawn to the concept. And when I heard it was for sale, I just knew that I wanted to be a part of it. So I ended up buying the business and I was 25 at the time. So I was quite young, but I just, you know, I do a lot of things based on gut and I just knew I had to be, you know, part of it. Yeah. So, you know, I think really um, intellectualizing it after the fact, it was that I really, um, you know, I've always been fascinated with successful women and I've always been fascinated with why, you know, you look at the rich lists and you look at the um, top CEOs and you look at the top entrepreneurs and the list is still dominated by men. So I was always fascinated mm -hmm. with how do we get more women there? How do we find those role models? How do we tell those stories? So without me even sort of knowing it at the time, uh, I knew that was a business I wanted to be part of. Yeah, Amen. I'm so with you. I, I, that's why I so love what you're doing because I agree. I think there's more women that need to be showcased mm. and their stories need to be heard and seen. And yet it's such an amazing time right now, Emma, that I see more and more women starting businesses. Yeah. And so many women, you know, reaching great levels of success, but there's still a lot that we can do and, and a, you know, yeah. a long way we can go. You're 100% right. We haven't, we're seeing, it's an exciting time we live in. We're seeing more and more women starting businesses every day. You know, the, the, the numbers way outweigh the men that are starting businesses. The issue is we're seeing women not scale businesses. Right. So they're starting businesses and staying small. Um, you know, we need to get women to learn how to, uh, you know, really propel themselves in business and build really profitable businesses that create jobs and create opportunities for other women. So it's it's one thing to start a business, it's mm -hmm. another to scale it and to create opportunities from that. A hundred percent. So can you share some of the things that you've done for those that are watching that want to do exactly that? Because I know that my viewers, they, they have huge visions mm -hmm. and dreams for their lives and their businesses and you have done that. So can you share maybe two or th yeah. three things that you have done to help you scale your business? I think one of the first things that I worked out very, very early on in my business journey was 
you need to make yourself redundant as quickly as possible. So it's not possible for you to be able to do every single thing in your business. Impossible. Impossible. I mean, I tell you, you're either going to end up rocking in the corner or, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not possible. So I learned very, very early on that you need to have a level of trust around the people you hire. You need to hire really, really well and you need to be able to entrust them to do the things that, you know, you may be innately good at, but you don't need to be doing. So it's really about how do you make yourself redundant really, really quickly. I think the next thing when it comes to people is to hire people who are smarter than you and that can be really challenging and confronting yeah. for a lot of people sure. you know people who have more knowledge than you people who have more experience than you they're the sort of people you want around you and, and on your team as well and it's really about letting go of the ego and always being the first to say I don't know how to do this I need some help here you know can you help me with that? We've talked about this off but camera. We know, we know. <laughs> we know I'm not good at that. <laughs> I think it's very difficult for women to ask for help. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I'm really good in my business at asking for help. I can ask anyone on my team for help on any given day. There's, I have no issue with that. When it comes to asking for help from people outside of my business, you know, I don't pay them. Right. They don't owe me something. You know, I haven't perhaps earned their trust or credibility. So I find that hard. You know, it's I, I spent my entire life working on my relationships and trying to give to people and try and build that credibility and trust. And so it, it still feels very awkward and hard for me to be able to say, I don't know you that well, but I need some help here. Yeah, and it's something it's that I'm, important. yeah, I'm practicing. I'm practicing. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to your team, I know with the entrepreneurs I work with, there's often a fear around, I, I don't know if I can hire or uh, afford to hire right. someone to come in. And I always say, well, you can't afford not, not to. to. Yeah. How, how do you kind of justify that? And when do you know it's the right time to bring someone on? Do you just trust and say, I just know I need to do this? Yeah, so here's the thing. You've got to make mistakes with people constantly. I make mistakes with people still to this day. Never You never get to this sort of end of the road where you've got this perfect picture around people. It's a constant learning game and you're going to mess it up a hundred times more. So I think it's just about having the confidence to give it a go and intuitively kind of walk through what you feel you need first and foremost. And we've spoken about this um, many times before. Sometimes hiring really, really, really expensive people is not the way to go. Right, you know, right, when you're starting yeah. out, minimizing and mitigating risk is a really, really important thing in your business journey. So, you know, you, they may not be the perfect person for you right now, but if they can do kind of 80% of what you need them to do, then take that punt. Mm -hmm. You know, you really need to be looking at hiring people who have got the right attitude and, you know, we can all teach a skill. We all know that. It's very, very easy. But I would say if you have some fear around hiring and if you're wondering whether you can afford it, you know, start with the, the hires that are a little less expensive and, you know, can help you cut your teeth and, and learn some lessons. Yeah, I mean, even if it's just getting an assistant to start. Right. You know, it's like when we're trying to do everything and be everything, we cannot scale and we're yeah. not doing our best work, which exactly. is what we're here to do. Exactly, you're spot on. And it also gives you, it's a practice. Like it's, yeah. it's practicing for the other hires you're going to make and you're going to learn about yourself. That didn't work for me or I didn't like that in that person or that didn't make me be the best version of myself and it's all learning you know it's I think women have this kind of mandate of trying to be perfect in their businesses mm -hmm. all the time and get it right and it's not about that it's about giving it a go and and having the courage to make mistakes and try again and people are you know it's a big part of that yeah I love that and I think men are actually a little bit more confident with making mistakes or, or, or taking risks sure right and, and I think like you said women we just want to do everything right and yeah be perfect yeah it, which is not how you scale a business no. because there are failures and, and lessons learned along yeah, the way 100 percent. and you have another full-time job which blows my mind <laughs> which is you are a mom of four kids under seven <laughs> miss just Emma take a breath I'm like <laughs> I would need a bottle of wine with me. To work oh, no, I have that. It's like in my eye. It's like the IVs right here. <laughs> okay, I, we hear this so much, you know, but is there any balance in your life or is it right now it just is what it is and you just show up the best that you can? Yeah, there's no balance. There's, there's <laughs> like nothing. There's I mean, there's nothing. You know, I... I try and just do two things really well. I try and be great in my business and for my people in my in my team. And I try and be great for the little people who wreak havoc on my house, <laughs> you know. And, and that's kind of all I, I do. Um, and, and it's, that's all. That's all. That's all I, that's all <laughs> I do. Really easy. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I put it like that because people, you know, talk about balance, the notion of balance. And, and for me, that means you have to be good at 
cooking and you have to be good at sport and you have to be, you know, 100% with your health and you have to be 100% in your social life. It's I don't really possible. have it. It's not possible, yeah. right? So I, I'm a pretty bad friend in a lot of ways. I'm, I'm very, you know, I have to turn down a lot of social engagements. So that's not a huge, you know, piece of the pie for me at the moment. Um, I don't really exercise that much. I'd, I'd love to more, um, you know, so... I have two main focuses in my life, but of course, it's, it's, it's a massive job. I'm not going to lie. It's a massive yeah. job. Yeah. So what's next for Business Chicks? I know that you just uprooted your family yeah. from Australia to be now here to scale in the States. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that vision yeah. and, and why you made that jump. Yeah. I really, really believe that networking and connection is a global need. It doesn't matter what role you play, how old you are what career you've chosen, you know, to connect, to be able to touch nothing and, better. you know, yeah. th there's nothing like that. We have all the technology, we have all the social media in the world, but there's nothing like being with people and, you know, experiencing that. So we really truly believe that what we do at Business Chicks is a global uh, need and we're really excited to fulfill on that vision. I don't know how we're going to do it, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but me moving from Australia with my four young kids and my, my husband last year, was a big step in the right direction to yeah. actualizing that. It's been a lot harder than we thought. We've been here for about 11 months now and, you know, it's been a transition year. You know, we um, arrived here with knowing a few people. Um, we bought the fourth house that we saw. <laughs> you know, we we sort of came with some clothes for the kids and some books and that was kind of it and we had to check out go. this, <laughs> you know. And I look back on that now and I think how incredibly stupid is not the right word but um, ambitious ambitious and brave <laughs> let's call it that let's call it that but, you know it was a really big undertaking for sure. us and you know I think that's where courage is realized you know in the action it's all well and good to talk about things but until I you're love actually that. I oh, love good. that that's so beautiful because mm. you're right courage comes in the action yeah, yeah I mean we can talk about things we can write about things but it happens in the doing so you know the moral to that story is we gave it a go we're here and we want to make it a, you know a huge successful beast in the US and also all around the world. Well, I wouldn't know you and have this opportunity yeah. to sit with you if you weren't here. And if you haven't had a chance to check out a Business Chicks event, you are missing out on one of the greatest things that you can do for yourself, for supporting other women in business. They are amazing. And let's just talk about a few of your guests. And by the way, yeah. I'm stealing your black book. Like, <laughs> out my phone. like you had one-on-one -on -one time with Bill Gates. Right. You hang out with Richard Branson, Diane von Furstenberg, Ariana Huffington. How how do you bring these people together? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, you know, part of our secret sauce is the relationships that we have and, and the beautiful friendships that we have with these people. And it takes years and years and years and years to, to build to build that. So, you know, people like, we brought Rachel Zoe to Australia a couple of years back. That, that relationship was started maybe, I don't know, six or seven years ago. Mm -hmm. We had Seth Godin, the marketing. Love him. He's amazing. amazing. Yeah, it doesn't get any better. <laughs> so he'd never been to Australia before and I started speaking to him maybe eight or nine years ago saying, come on, Seth, you know, you've got a big fan base there and it'd be great to have you. And, you know, I got no, 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 no. no. And I, I think there's a lesson in that, right? Absolutely. Just go, Such a powerful lesson. They get a no, they go, okay, um, I'm like, no does not mean no. It just yeah. means not now. It just means not now. Yep. I so believe that. <laughs> I know you believe that. <laughs> I know first I'll you give you a that. couple more weeks. You'll come around. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think that's part of the part of the um, you know, secret is is that patience is a really, really big factor and we want everything right now and you know, our the generation that follows us just needs this instant gratification all the time. I'm willing yeah. to be patient and I just know that if I can, you know, build a relationship and show who I am and what I believe in, then these people will start to trust us as well. And it's it's kind of worked. And you've proven that to be true. Yeah, yeah. yeah we still, you know, again, <laughs> we've got a long way to go. But we've, you know, we've been so blessed. We've had speakers and educators like Dr. Brene Brown, and you mentioned uh, Diane von Furstenberg. Um, oh, Sir Bob Geldof. You know, some some amazing, you know, world leaders, thought leaders, visionaries, entrepreneurs, um, celebrities. It's um, it's it's beautiful work. So you and I then, I'm going to assume that we both believe that mentorship, coaching, investing in yourself is very important mm. towards achieving your goals. Do, right. Have you seen that with interviewing some of these people? And do you still seek out your own sort of mentorship? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I have. A huge, you know, pool of people around me, if you like, that I can call at any point in time that I, that I trust, 
and who have my back and you know they range from people like that through to my buddies that I met 10 years ago through peer-to-peer -peer networks or through business chicks and you know it's it's everything you know to be able to lean on those people um, I'm one of these people that I know a billion people but I trust you know a handful yeah. uh, so you know when you're in my inner circle it's a really um, you know I, I guard my not secrets but you know um, you know, it takes a lot to sort of get into that inner circle, sure. and and I'm a vault. I have a lot of um, not I don't know why we're talking about secrets, but you know, a lot of people entrust. Um, but it's all about relationships. It and is that's what we're talking about. Is is you've been able to cultivate and keep people in your life and yeah. and get those um, those mentors. You know, yeah, yeah, definitely. You've, because you've built that. Yeah, definitely. And I also think that mentors don't need to be just people that you meet with every month and you sit down and you have a conversation. It's not about that. Like, you know, I would consider us to be mentors with each other. Absolutely, it could be yeah. a phone call every month or every couple of months. It doesn't need to be a set thing where, you know, it's a structured program. You know, it's just about having people around you that you can turn to for different things. And you're never going to get that from one person either. I think that's really, really important Completely to understand. Agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Different people will bring different expertise yeah. and, and advice and experiences yeah. speaking of experiences yeah you you did say earlier you've been a serial entrepreneur yeah. so you've pretty much been unemployable <laughs> your whole life. <laughs> thank you <laughs> which i so understand um let's talk about life lessons hmm. what has been something that you look back on maybe and say mm, you know i i don't regret it but i wouldn't do it again oh gosh that's a really really hard one um you know, I think when it comes to life lessons, and we alluded to it before, you know, moving to the States with my young family without any plan was probably, I don't want to say a mistake, but I certainly could have done things differently. So, so that for me, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a planner. I'm not a person who knows where I want to be in five years and 10 years time. I, I've got a sense of it and I've, I've certainly got some goals, but I've never have a business plan, you know, that sort of exceeds any more than three months in the future. Um, but, I, but I really think when you, if you're going to take huge life risks and decisions, you want to have a bit more of a plan than, than I did with our move to the US. So I'd say that was one of my biggest learnings. I feel like I'm <laughs> looking at myself when you say that because <laughs> I'm so with you. Yeah. And I feel like that's one of the things that makes entrepreneurs what they are and who they are you is that, that big vision. You but it's that. not that, oh my gosh, I have to know what I'm doing a year from now, three oh, years yeah. from now. And I feel like if you have that structure, sometimes you you lose sight of other opportunities that can take you yeah. where you want to go. A hundred percent. I mean, the beauty of an entrepreneur is that they're comfortable in the discomfort. They're comfortable in the not knowing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'd say if you're a person who really struggles and needs that certainty, then perhaps you know, the world of entrepreneurship is not for you. You know, I mean, I'm I'm so comfy in the not knowing. Um, I'm all I good with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I do need people around me who can, you know, sort of pick up the pieces behind me and put the stuff <laughs> And make sure in that place. we are going somewhere yeah. where we want to go. <laughs> <Not> in circles. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going around the room. So I ask all my guests, um, what does inspired living mean to you? Uh, you know, that's an easy one for me. Inspired living is about living with a bunch of courage and it's about doing things when you're not ready to do them. It's about, you know, inspiring others to see possibility, you know, and um, that for me, I think we can find inspiration everywhere. If I can inspire a woman to start her own business or to hire more people or to move overseas or, <laughs> you know, to have four babies. I had my four babies at home and that was a beautiful um, experience for me. So Incredible. it doesn't mean I, you know, I say you should do that, but I'm saying you should trust in your body that you you know, a great birth is possible yeah. for you in, in whichever way you want to do that. So, you know, it's about taking risks, it's about doing things when you're not entirely 100% ready. And it's just, you get one life, you know, you just got to have a go. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you do. Well, you are a shining example of that, Emma. I adore you. I'm so excited that you brought mm -hmm. Business Chicks to the U.S. If people want to find out more about yeah. Business Chicks and attending an event, how do they do that? Well, they ask you. They you're ask like, me. <laughs> our biggest ask me. You are on my, <laughs> my website under my oh, brand good. partners. Yes. Oh, good. Um, and, but can they also go to yeah, Business Chicks? Yeah, sure. It's just businesschicks.com. So go check out the website. We'd love to see you at an event soon. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. There's nothing like coming together. The energy in the room is it's kind of special, huh? And everyone walks away with a little extra pep in their step. Yeah. And I love that. So thank you, Emma. Thank you so thank much you. for your bravery and your courage and coming over to the other side. I can't wait to see where you go next. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for watching this Inspired Living interview. If you want more inspiration, and they do, right? Of course they do. Of course. Do. You yes, never you have want enough. More inspiration, <laughs> head on over to inspiredliving.tv and download my free gift. We would love to welcome you into the community. And if you like this video, 
video, please share it with someone you care about because when you are inspired, you inspire others. And always remember to keep dreaming it, living it, and being it. Until next time. Ha <laughs> ha.